we drove out to this guy's place and it was just kind of like sitting in his shed all dusty and neglected and I stripped it back and started, you know, fixing up and changing it and trying to make it look like the good ones because <laughs> it wasn't. Because <laughs> of the area that I grew up in, people would have stuff sitting in the back of their shed and things that I know now were like super awesome and probably valuable, I would just kind of like tear apart and probably ruin for the better part of it. but. Um, I just kind of like fix them up, make them look nice, get them going again, and then sell them off to people. And there was like a rotating door on my dad's shed. At one point I had like eight bikes when I was 16. <laughs> had an affinity for pulling things apart and just to see how they worked. I couldn't put them back together, but <laughs> they'd definitely get pulled apart. You know, I always loved riding, but I loved wrenching on these things just as much. There's no better joy than creating something with your hands because when I'm riding down the street I fucking put this thing together with my own damn hands you know I didn't go into a dealership and pick it up you get to go out and enjoy this labor that you've put into this machine that you've crafted it's unreal especially on bikes that you've really kind of tested yourself on and and gone that extra mile or tried something new when it works and when you can ride it and it you know jump on that thing and go as fast as you can on it and it's just like howling out the exhaust and everything working you know it's it's incredible you can't beat that feeling well yeah I guess that's what building bikes is really um, you know you can make your own stuff or you can pick apart bits and pieces from different bikes that you like and and make them fit I like the stuff that you see where you don't really know where it's come from or why they did that it's just kind of like a stretch of their skill and they're like well fuck it I'm just gonna put that in that thing there's always that little like nervousness when you hit the button for the first time like is this thing gonna run is it gonna ride okay uh, is everything lined up right and is everything tight so I think like for a lot of guys um, they're taking these old motors and frames and stuff because I feel like they do have a bit more soul. There's, a, there's something to be said about, about an old bike that, you know, has been through a lot and you're riding this thing and anyone who's ridden something old, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but they know what I'm talking about. I lent on a lot of people for advice and for help and stuff like that, but as far as, you know, being trained to do anything, that was never a thing that happened to me. It was just kind of, I need to do this, let me figure out how to. I don't ever sit down and practice something. Unless I'm doing it for a purpose, I don't do it at all. Um, I won't sit down with two pieces of metal and learn how to weld. I will try to make something and then if I mess it up, I'll cut it apart and I'll start again and do it until I get it right. On the ground, it's always going to be about the guys that started where I started, you know, the guys that are tinkering away on weekends in a crammed shed. You know, they just kind of like knuckle down and knock out these incredible projects you got to have that community of guys there, especially like me, I'm learning so, you know, rapidly to be involved and have those guys that have more experience around you. Having Justin so close, he's like an amazing machinist and fabricator, so I, 
you know, it's just a text. I'll shoot him a text, ask him a stupid question and he'll can answer it, you know. I think with guys like that, you get an instant rapport because you're connected through motorcycles. It's like instant buddies, you know. Like when you go up to a kid at school and he's got a cool matchbox car and so do you, you're like, fuck yeah, we're mates now, you know. That's just kind of the deal. So yeah, if you got something old and you want something amazing, go see Justin. She creaks alive in silent nights Telling me she's my ghost She says I wanna be your hero Tearing out their eyes so slow Call me a child of dole I wanna slice your throat with my four-inch serrated knife Ripping down every wall inside your castle of dawn Till I reach my soul thirty miles I want to sort of, yeah, have more of my own style, I guess. More unique, I want them to be more handmade, more like artwork, but still functional. Yeah, I want people to be able to ride them, but people to also look at them going, what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know, really. I've always liked making stuff with my hands. I've always pulled things apart and, um, you know, tried to figure out how they work. And I don't know. I'd, it's like I was in cars, into cars before, but you'd always do a car and you'd look at a car and go, oh, that's, you know, that's a Chevy pickup, that's, you know, a C10, that's Camaro, that's something like that. Whereas with bikes, you can get real personal, you can make them into something totally unique. And um, yeah, I think the further I've gotten into it, the more and more I just want to, I look at something and go, I don't like how that's made, yeah, I'd, I'd like it to look like this or I think it'd be better if it looked like this. So I just want to get to a point where I can just make the whole thing. I prefer it to come in boxes or milk crates or completely stripped apart. I want to do it from the ground up and I want to know that everything's done the right way. I really love them when they're, when they're difficult, when it's a challenge. A lot of stuff I pull it apart and go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a bit much and I'll put it back together. But even just that, that playing with stuff and knowing how it works. Th things I've sort of pushed myself too far, I guess. Like I've sort of gone, yeah, I can do that. And then I didn't really know how. And I've had to spend a lot of time figuring out how to do it. But I, I like that. So it's, it's sort of a, it's pushing my boundaries a bit, I guess. So yeah, like there's a lot of people around that, you know, can offer help, but, or there's the internet. But um, a lot of the times, I don't know, I just like to sit down and nut it out myself. And then, you know, if you get stuck, you can always find a way. But um, yeah, I think that's part of the enjoyment of it, is just learning new things. It's, it's sometimes you get lucky and they'll kick over and they'll just run smoothly. Like you'll throw a heap of just random parts together and, and bang, it fires and it just works. And then other times you'll put something together exactly how the manual says, totally stock standard, and it just won't go and you're just like, why? What the hell? But um, it's usually something pretty small and minor. So. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating because you know, you know, it's got fuel, it's got air, it's got spark. Like early on in the piece, I'd always be like, oh, this, this is happening. Why is that happening? And I'd be looking in books, I'd be looking in manuals and you get so much information, you sort of get overloaded and you stress out about it. Whereas now it's sort of like, okay, I'm gonna step away from that for five minutes. I'll come back to it with a clear head. And then, I don't know, you just sort of go, okay, this, this bit's hooked to this bit. That bit's can't do that unless this is doing this. And you figure it out. I, I suppose you do build a relationship with each bike. Like some you really hate, and then they'll get to a point where you're like, nah, this has really changed my mind. I love this thing now. And then some you sort of get sick of and then you miss them <laughs> but you come back to them and you're like oh yeah that's right this thing was pretty cool but um yeah it's 
it's hard to see a lot of them leave. It leaves and you're like, yeah, it's just not exactly how I wanted it, but you could go on forever. You'd, you'd never finish a bike otherwise, yeah. I don't know, it sort of grows into you a bit, I guess. Um, the smell of everything, the, the feeling of them running, the sounds, the sounds are awesome. <laughs> um, but just knowing that you've made something that you can get on and take anywhere you want. Like sometimes you can take an old rattly, you know, bike that was built in the 60s, 70s, 50s, 40s even, and sort of, you know, put modern components on it. You can make it perform like 10 times better and feel like a really comfortable, like smooth, awesome to ride bike, like a modern bike. It's, it's become this monster of its own and yeah, it's sort of, I think that's, I don't know, gives you a bit of an adrenaline rush ride and that sort of thing. I never realized Brad was so young. I just assumed he was a, a lot older because he's this like gun fabricator, you know, he builds these frames from scratch. And, you know, no matter how old he was, it would have been incredible. But then he told me he was only 23, it kind of like blew my mind. Like anything, if you, if you enjoy it enough and you're willing to put the time in, you're gonna get good at it. And Brad obviously has. Today, um, you ride bikes around for all the same reasons. Uh, when you're growing up as a kid, you ride your BMX around with your mates, and, and um, like if you're into BMXs, you know that it's pretty common to pull your wheels off and change the wheels and change the forks, change your bars and seat, you know, all the same things you do to a motorcycle these days. And you'd all look at your mates' bikes and, and sort of go, oh yeah, I like what you've done here, or why don't you change this? And, then you'd go ride them everywhere because that's the only way you could get around was on your push bike. So it's kind of like taking the same same concept as a motorcycle, but just, you know, you don't have to pedal around everywhere. I often get laughed at for only having like five tools in the shed, but you only need, you know, basic, basic things to um, get the job done. Don't really need much more. A few basic tools to unscrew and screw on a few bolts. In Australia, there's guys like that build bikes out of their shed, you know, that inspire me uh, probably the most because they're just like you and me, everyday guys having a go and, and sometimes they pull out the best, you know, some of the best bikes in Australia or even in the world. Well, a custom motorcycle is almost like a piece of art at the end of the day and it sort of doesn't matter what you throw into it, whether it's your soul or, or the money you got, but if you push through it all at the end of the day, you you've got this piece of art that you can just jump on and take it for a ride. So whether it be Harleys, Jap bikes, British bikes, the, the, at the end of the day, two wheels is a, a common passion. That's all I did really, was sort of get involved as much as I could. And I guess, you, I guess you're kind of like living a dream once you're sort of in there. And it's probably something that will stick with me forever. Like it's, I don't think it's really something that would go away. I'm always trying new things, um, but you never know what's going to happen. You're always learning and always like trying to learn new things. Realistically, I haven't been doing it for that long compared to a lot of people, but I've done everything myself and the only way I've really learned to do stuff myself is just by diving in and doing it. But there are plenty of times where you need to reach out to someone else for advice or help. A 
good community of motorcyclists will want to see other people on motorcycles. So they'll go out of their way to help someone else um, get their bike going so they can all go riding. Or, like every piece of putting a motorcycle together is a challenge. Um, if it's not a challenge, then you sort of sit back and go, well, it's too good to be true. Uh, a good example with the frames, building a frame from scratch, is that it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to go above and beyond what you typically do to customise a, a motorcycle um, or build one from scratch. Um, that way you can really build a bike the way you want to build it, right down to the lines of the frame or what the frame's going to do or how it's going to handle. Plenty of good ones and plenty of bad ones where everything goes wrong or everything's fine, you never whip a tool out. But yeah, it all contributes to the memories. I'd heard about Matt, uh, kind of like mysteriously. I, he was known to me as this guy that worked on the motorcycles that were in the latest Mad Max and that he has done. It's all kind of really out there and cool and, and kind of super creative and, and something pretty different as well. No point to resist, no other fight from days to years. Just passing by We lost our tension, lost the light Across the ocean of our lives You know what's wrong to be with you Start on your own bikes, get into it But you've, you've got to start at the bottom and work your way up You've got to dig deep and you know if You've, you've got to do those, all those bits and pieces that everyone else had to get to to actually be a good builder and understand that if you don't go through those processes, it's like being a baby and, and walking without crawling. So it's, it really, you can build anything, the sky's the limit, but it, it has to come together and work properly, obviously. But yeah, it's hard to um, you put your finger on it. I think it's kind of like, if I'm typing an email, I'm thinking from my fingers, if you're building the bike, it's kind of, it's forming itself as you go sometimes. You know? I think being innovative is really important. Have a bit of fun with it. It's a little bit difficult in places. I like that. We do do some collaborations with some people at the moment. I think it's pretty important for people to help each other. Full shovel ahead, my mate. He lost his job last year. A bit unfair. Was a bit out of sorts. You know, he's just an amazing dude. Great surfer. Just loves life. And he's just getting a bit out of his mind. I said, come to the shop and just, just build your bike. You know, it's like, I want to go. I've got to go away. I've got to go away. So just building his bike up with a double surfboard rack on it that carries boards so he could take off down to Torquay and scoot across you know, from Melbourne and, and Adelaide and, and just get out of town and, and clear his head. And so it was a pretty big mission to actually get the bike working properly. Like Sometimes you second guess yourself and how things are done, but I think the moment you finish it and ride it, you, 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 you're pretty much pulling the bike back in for another half a day a day and just changing a bunch of stuff. Um, just very small things to make it nice. You know? So we just finished it up. He was going to take off that night and it's like, no, no, just ride it home, come back, we'll make sure everything's sweet. You know? Rides home without all the gear on it, uh, gets down to Bondi, going down the alleyway, probably 40k an hour, the whole gearbox is locked up, threw the bike sideways, threw him over the bars, broke his big toe. Next, you know, the next day we drag the bike back and get going again, he just, hit after hit he was taking, he was getting so depressed, and we finally got the bike going, and a smile on his face when he left. You can see he got a lot more satisfaction out of it. We had to finish the majority of it off, but he had a hand in it, and that made all the difference to him. How good it felt actually being able to finish it and accomplish that, but I think it's pretty important for people to help each other. And it was a journey, you know. Bike broke down in Melbourne, broke down in Adelaide. <laughs> but, you know, he got to those places and met wonderful people on the way who were willing to help and um, he came back a new man. You know, it was that journey, it just wasn't about the, the bike itself and building the bike. But building the bike gave him, the, I think, um, the clarity to, to get things back on track with his own life, you know. So, some guys need that to get out of their heads and just, you know, enjoy something else that hands on giving um, everyone a bit of an outlet, you know. I think working on the bike actually helps you sort of get away from some of the pressures of life.
dais is this like gargantuan motorcycle god, I guess you would call them. They're so highly regarded by nearly everyone. Um, so I kind of like knocked on their door one day when I was in Sydney and I was really interested to talk to Jeremy simply because he'd kind of like, he'd been at Deus for a long time and seen that business grow from, you know, a couple of guys knocking around in a garage to just something that just absolutely exploded. And, you know, for someone to be doing something at that scale for such a long time uh, and handle it so well, I think is something that I really, you know, respect about him. And I think it's a, you know, something that not a lot of people could do. The beginning for me was very hard because I wasn't speaking much of English. <laughs> so the mechanic vocabulary was just almost impossible. But I didn't know all, so it was, that was the first challenge for me. But then uh, I think I just, I wasn't afraid of trying and, and trying again and fails and errors. But my background has zero I don't have a background of customization. Or, well, so when I step in this world of customization and there wasn't so much online back customization and stuff, but nowadays there's so much out there that you can just flick through magazines or we, we found back in, in some shops around in Sydney, like the piles of very old Harleys and whatever styles and you can go there and you just pick little things that's kind of cool. And, uh, often I started a project where I really wasn't seeing where I was going and halfway there, halfway through it, sometimes it takes slight little turns and, it, and then it kind of, and they all kind of end up to work together and it's really satisfying. What I found is um, it is quite delicate to work on an idea of someone else because you kind of follow a path that sometimes you wouldn't take. The aim is always to come up and with something new, something different, so you don't want to be repetitive. If I, leave, if I left the, the general mechanic of doing servicing, is not to do the same thing every day and every day, so new technology comes on, you've got to get along with it so you can move on and learn and work with them and, and get better and doing stuff a bit different. Well, uh, the, 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 the main challenge in, uh, in a business like this, which now, because there's no many people working with me, is to keep progressing and keep learning. And uh, I guess if, if I find myself at a stage where there is no room for me to improve, this is where I'm gonna obviously look around and, and see if there's something that I can get. Because we, we never wanna stop, we always wanna get better at, at something. Uh, surround yourself with the, the, the right people. You, you can be good, but you, you can never do everything on your own. Often when something fails, especially in wiring, it turns out to be a very small mistake and it's just a matter to find where, where it's coming from and so you can come back to it and keep going. Uh, when I say, sometimes you will finish a motorcycle and uh, I call it failure because I can see, I can see where I made that mistake. It's not like the back is a failure, it still will run stuff, but in terms of aesthetic or lines and shape, it's something that wouldn't glitch on everyone's eyes but on myself. I think because I'm just being tough on, uh, on my own personal work. Is this, I, I, I would say it's a failure, but it, it doesn't look like one, but it's something I should have made different, so I would be 100% happy with the result. I guess if you're not that perfectionist and I'd give attention to all details, then uh, it kind of loses purpose. I've always been a sort of creative in building stuff. If, even if it wasn't out of a motorcycle, it's, I'm, I like create stuff. My passion has been from very young, the two wheels, motorcycles, and I grew up from two years old to today, pretty much on them all the time. So I, it's, it's kind of, it comes naturally. It's something when I'm off working in holiday, I still come here and work on my own project.
I forget how I first found out about Ian. I'm sure that it was online, you know. I think he might have contacted me about something or other to do with motorcycles and we got talking and then before too long I was down in his area. That was a lot of fun. I, you know, in a million years I would have never thought that he'd let me jump on that black cat of his and, and go for a ride, but I took his Triumph out and we were banging around his area. It was a great morning. I could never just buy a bike and ride it. Um, I think so much of the excitement for me with bikes is building something and then actually having it run and having all the dramas. And even now, like people say, oh, yeah, the black cat, like it's a show bike. Nobody ride, I ride the hell out of that thing. I've ridden thousands of miles on it. Like therapy's riding, 100%. Just riding, you see, no one can call you, no one can contact you. Like I'll go riding for like four or five hours, make it home without breaking down. That's, that's a good day. <laughs> it's the best day ever. Yeah, no, I wasn't allowed to have a bike, 100%. No, it was, you get a bike, you're out. So no, I'd, I'd never had a bike. I always really liked them. Like when I was sort of teenage years, one of my mates he had a farm down in Jaroa, down the south coast. When we sort of got a bit older, his parents would go out for dinner and we'd go fanging around the streets like in Jaroa down there at night. And um, yeah, I was just absolutely hooked. I decided to build a bike about four or five years ago, just because I couldn't afford to have a bike that I wanted, so I thought I'd build it. And then everyone, the reaction to the bike was bigger than I thought, to be honest. And I've got a lot of people like saying, oh, where'd you get this, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, I made it, I made it. This, this has turned out like 100% different to what I sort of thought I was gonna make. This is completely different. I never really start with a 100% idea of what it's gonna be. Nothing rolls in here, everything yeah. <laughs> comes in parts. Once the frame's in, the engine's in it, and up on wheels, um, that's when the sort of the ideas start. I'll be building, I'm putting the engine in the frame and I'm not that into it. And it gets to a certain stage where it starts to look like a bike and you can start to see it. And I just get excited about it, like I'll dream about it and I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be typing something in my iPhone, like an idea I've got, or I'll see something on the net and I'll print it out and I'll put heaps of stuff up on the walls that I like. I just get really excited about it, to be honest. I just really love doing it. Don't like talking to people. Like once I'm doing what I'm doing, like I don't want to be contacted. Once I start, I don't stop. Like there'll be stuff everywhere. And they'll spend another day cleaning it up. But yeah, just getting so excited. Just put the headphones in. I'm just down here for like six, seven hours. I won't eat nothing. <laughs> and just, yeah, I, that's my favorite thing in the whole world. Anybody that sees the bikes, like I'm not, some like savant on machining and stuff. I just keep doing it until it's right. Yeah, I mean, anything that I've done, I'm self-taught, so that's what took the longest. It's just learning the skills to actually do stuff because I've never really well <laughs> until I started. Yeah. So a lot of stressful moments when you first start going like 100 mile an hour, you start thinking about the stuff you've welded. The black cat got its name, the black cat, because it's so bloody unlucky. Just recently, actually, I was with my dad in Sydney. I got dad back into riding, he'd ridden his young years, he hadn't ridden in 40 years. And he bought a bike and we get riding together now. I had an oil line break out at West Head and I was trying to do 100, 100 mile an hour again on that. Oil line broke and I didn't realise I was pumping oil out the back and the people were trying to catch up and there's oil spraying all over so they couldn't get close. And pulled up and then the oil line had snapped so I ended up having to get down a motor valve and get it back together with worm drive clips and rubber hose. That caught on fire about two weeks ago. Again, just using old parts, I was using like a 1940s BSA petcock, which just relies on cork. I'd had it out for ages, so it had shrunk and cracked, didn't realise. Had the air cleaners off, just tuning it. I knew it was dripping, but I thought, oh, be right. And then um, just turned around and went up in a ball of flame, so I managed to put it out. But stuff like that, I mean, just stuff happens. That's what makes it interesting. It was, yeah. if, if everything went well, you wouldn't do it again. So. <laughs> Making a lot of mistakes. Just not doing those mistakes again, you'll find out what doesn't work, what does work. I may not do it the way that everybody else does it, but I just do it in a way that works. So teaching myself everything I need to actually 
build the bikes, that's what's taking longer. I bought it, probably the worst way to do it, but again, it was probably the best because I learned so much. I bought it just two crankcases, the crank and a frame, and then I was bought it all piece by piece by piece. And heaps of people told me, oh, it's a, it's a heap of rust, like you'll never finish that. It's a nothing and, and now it's finished. Yeah, it took me five years, but don't give up. You'll hit a lot of major roadblocks. Um, people worry about timing and stuff like that. And people tell you you can't do it. If they're not that difficult. It's just a, just a bike, right? Just keep going with it. And yeah, just don't give up, you'll be fine. I feel like Scott has a really kind of race-bred style. The passion for what he does and for being able to do it for so long since he was a kid, you know, hanging around with his dad at the Speedway and sidecar racing and now building some super nice customs as well. He had a bunch of his mates around. We had all these bikes that he built there and we went out for a ride in the mountains. It was great. Well, I've raced all my life. That's all I've known. I've raced every weekend. You know, we race cars, bikes. If I'm not spinning spanners and making something, or fabricating something that, that, I tell you what is an achievement. You build something for racing sidecars. You, you can't buy anything for a sidecar. Everything has to be built and made. You can't buy shit. They don't have a sidecar shop. You know what I mean? So you build something and you put it together and then you go do 260 kilometers an hour on it weekend after weekend and not have a kill you. That's an achievement. You've built that and it's tipping into Eastern Creek at turn one and phenomenal speeds. And it's holding together, you know, and it, but not just once, it does it all year. That's an achievement. And that's how I look at these things. There's things that you learn when you're building bikes, especially for racing. Um, in race conditions, Things are a lot, a lot more stressed. They're, they're, put, they're pushed to their limits a lot more. So you tend to build things with that in mind. So when they get on the road, they don't fall apart. You do a few sleepless nights. You think, oh crap, did I actually make the right decision? You know what I mean? You gotta love what you do. The second it becomes a job, you hate it. Nobody likes going to work, so. Yeah, so we play, that's, it's all about the play for us. But then, you know, that's just, that's me. That's just how, how I, I, I tend to put myself under a bit of pressure. I'm my own worst critic. If I'm pleased, actually I'm never convinced that I'm pleased. I don't think I've ever been pleased once. There's always something that rolls out and I go, you know, I should have spent half an hour longer and just made that a little bit different. Yeah, it's, uh, you know yourself.
you're never a hundred percent happy with everything. Um, I take advice from anyone, and then I'll dissect whether it's relevant to what I'm doing or not. There's a lot of people that know a, a hell of a lot more than I do. Yeah, so no, you never stop learning. You learn every day. Well, my old man's passed away now. He passed away uh, uh, nearly four years ago. Well, actually, you, you, nearly four years ago. And um, the knowledge that he imparted upon me is pride. When he when he passed away, my uh, my go-to book was gone. I had no more thesaurus. I had to learn to spell. So yeah, I can't remember up until the day I retired. I can't remember when I didn't have something here that I raced. And now I'm 51. So I pretty much when you do it all your life and you've been surrounded and you've grown up around it all your life, I think that's, that's, it's you. It's, it's what you are, it's what you do. Well, I think my father, he, he was still racing his classic bike at Eastern Creek at age 74. So I can still see myself going to that age. So, you know, if it's there and there's an event on what I'm eligible to ride in, well, I'm gonna do it, yeah, just not as often. Because photos don't do them justice. A lot of these bikes don't ride them enough. You make these really cool bikes and they want to stick them in their shed and polish them. Oh, I want to see them out there and be ridden and if I go to a bike show, I want to see them there, you know. And that makes me prouder. Huh? Yeah. The fact they're still running. <laughs> yeah. It's like anything you do. It's a sense of achievement. But it's, it's, all, part of the, it's all part of why we do it, I guess. I like Ella Speed's kind of commitment to the community. They seem to have made themselves the centre of a community up in Brisbane and they put on a lot of events for, for riders around the place. Coming from a design background, I think is something that they brought to the table that a lot of our other builders um, don't really come from that, that side of things. For me, it was just a, an interest, you know. It was a, I'd always restored cars and um, done a bit of that stuff. So, you know, I thought, hey, why not? It's it's simpler than a car. Looking at it, it's a pretty simple little bike. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science what they're doing sort of thing. So, um, I thought we could do this. We could give it a go. So let's let's just get a couple of bikes ourselves and just see if we can do it. Really, it's always a if you're starting something yourself, I mean, unless you've got a heap of money backing you sort of thing, I mean, you're always going to be a, um, thinking, oh, is this going to work out and how can we pay the bills next week and such. But it's, it's basically just persistence, really. There was late nights when, you know, there was just Leo and I there in, in the workshop and, you know, we had to have this thing done for a date that coming up, which just seemed impossible. But, you know, hey, if you just get into it and persist with it, you'll, you'll get something out of it, you'll make it work. I think, you know, we, we would have all had, you know, like childhood memories of travelling interstate or something like that, long road trips with your parents and, and you know, next minute you just see this horde of like um, bikers come past and, you know, like they're overtaking the car and you're just like, oh, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can, you can feel yourself shaking inside the car and, you know, there's this big, you know, Harley's like roll past and you know I guess that's something that's always stayed with me as a, as a kid it's like yeah you know like that looks so cool and it looks like so much fun um, that I you know just wanted to do that whenever someone used to turn up on a motorbike or something like that you know I'd always be out there and be like oh you know what's this and 
what's that do and oh, can I have a sit on it and can I rev the bike and by the, yeah, by the age of uh, sort of you know, 20, 22, 23, I was like screw this, I'm, I'm, gonna, go, I'm gonna go buy a bike. And then yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't long that I was like, oh, you know, actually, it'd be kind of cool if, you know, the bike looked like this and I, you know, wanted to start changing a few bits and pieces on it. And I think that's, that's pretty much the whole essence and the whole culture of custom bikes, isn't it? You know, get that itch and that scratch to sort of want to, oh man, you know, actually, I want to do something myself. I want to, I want to add something. I want to change this. We used to have my design studio, uh, like at the back of my house, above sort of the, the garage and stuff. And it was great. It was a great little setup um, that Steve and I had and uh, 2011 floods came and didn't just fill the ceiling of the garage, it went pretty much halfway up the house as well. Um, and at that time, you know, it was sort of, you know, we just just pretty much got set up um, in, in, in terms of getting machinery and you know, Steve and I spent heaps of money on buying tools and, you know, getting, getting stuff ready and, and all this sort of stuff. And, and we're like, yeah, this is going to be sweet. We can, you know, get into a few bikes, and, and you know, that'll be that. And, um, and then, yeah, and it just the, the floods absolutely just KO'd everything. I, I reckon it probably would have set us back about two years. Um, in, in all honesty, like you know, if you, you factor in all the little bits of time that it took to then redo half of the stuff, and you know, go get tools again. Um, and it's not that the tools were ruined necessarily. It's just that the floods came, and you go look for the tool, and you're like. Well, I don't know where it is. It's not where it was because obviously the water's carried it away, and you know it's still a running joke here for Steve and I. You know, you can't find science. Like, oh, where is it? I don't know. Probably lost it in the floods. Or something. <laughs> so uh, we can sort of reflect and laugh on it now. But yeah, at the time, yeah, you know, it was, it was definitely you know pretty hard, especially because we just ticked over to sort of thinking, oh yeah, maybe we can actually pursue this as a bit of a um, as a bit of a side thing. You know, maybe we can split our time between our design studio and. And, and these bikes and you know we can kind of make a go of it um, so you know it's sort of like right off the bat you get kicked in the nuts and you just think oh great <laughs> you know like thanks you know and for us you know it's always been like oh yeah you know if we can just get to that next corner and then get to the next corner and you know so on and so forth You tend to find the people that are, are really getting involved fairly quickly. There's a nice social group and you know, we talk to each other and if ever we're in each other's area, we'll go have a beer together and, and stuff like that. That's really what it's, it's about. You know, these guys aren't my competition. They're more friends than anything else now. Starting up Purpose Built Motor a few years ago, I kind of came into it blind and I figured out that this was what I wanted to do. So. With a handcrafted trip that we did, we got to meet so many amazing builders that I've had kind of the pleasure of, of dealing with, you know, and if ever I'm stuck, there's a community around me that's been able to support what I'm doing and they're only a phone call away, you know. They might be, you know, anywhere down the east coast of Australia, but I can call them up and I know at any point in time, if I'm stuck with a particular thing, that these guys are, are willing to help because they believe in what I'm doing and, and I'm the same for them. like the coolest guys are always kicking around on bikes we had dirt bikes and you know 
the guys that I used to hang out with, all their dads rode. So being able to kind of like thrust myself into that community of custom motorcycles, like it's a super steep learning curve and I'm still like very much halfway there. I don't think it'll ever be finished, but so having something that's always been around and, and then kind of realizing that that's the direction that I want to take my life in and that's what I want to do is, it's kind of been like a good realization and I don't want to work for the man anymore, you know? And I don't really care if that's going to pay the bills or not. It's going to happen eventually and, and that's the way that it's going to turn out.